But I want to do a quick tutorial and show you how to doing a mirror seating chart. This is Claudia. I'm in the middle of doing a mirror seating chart. I want to do a quick tutorial and show you how to doing a mirror seating chart. It is quite tricky because in the ideal world, your mirror would be the perfect size and you would have the perfect number of tables and each table would have the same number of guests and you will make the work so much easier. But that's not the case in reality. There is a lot of calculation that goes into it to make sure that everything gets laid out properly and everything looks nice. This lovely bride, she's so sweet. I am working with her right now. She has 147 guests and there are 17 tables. She wants um, scripts on the table headers and block print for the names. The very first thing that I do when it comes to that, I would actually transcribe all the guest lists into block letters and then center them in the middle of the cell. So I will make sure that all the spe uh, spelling is correct. Make sure that if there's any questions, I'll ask the bride um, just so that there are no concerns. In terms of the script, I'll choose a font that is closely resembled to how I would write on the mirror itself so that when I put the center line on the mirror, I will kind of know how wide it is in order for me to gauge. In the very beginning, what I thought of was do it in a landscape mode because I told her about the arrangement of the mirror. She asked the vendor and they recommended to do it in a portrait mode. This is what I came up with. If we take out these two blocks for the header itself, that would have 18 cells. One of her tables is quite large. There are 11 guests. So I ended up laying it out. Fortunately, it is table 12 and it is not table 10, for example, that had a lot of guests. I ended up putting table 12 right there and put some of the couples together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and ahead and do some calculations, figure out what the height is for each of the headers and then what the height is for the names itself. The mirror seating charts preparation is very important. It's a lot of work in order to um, take all these measurements. Once I have everything calculated, I will show you quickly how I went about doing it. This mirror is a rectangle and there are a lot of mirrors out there that are irregular shape. You can do your best in dividing them depending on what the mirror actually looks like. The main two things that I want to show you guys, I will put in a border around the mirror. And the other thing is I will calculate some sort of space in between each of the cells. This way, if for example, it's a table with a very large party, you still have some space in between the last line of the name and the next header. So that's why you need to get those into consideration. The easiest way that I can go about doing it is depending on if you measure it in inches or in centimeters. If it's in inches, I would take an inch off on both of the sides. Or if it's in centimeters, I would do about 2.5 centimeters on each side. So minus 2.5 on the top, minus 2.5 on the bottom for centimeters, an inch, an inch on the top and bottom. So here is how I calculated my mirror. The height of the mirror is 90.8 and the width of the mirror is 60.96. So it's a close to 61. In order to take off the 2.5 centimeters on each side, my height is minus 5, so that becomes 85.8 and the width becomes 56. For four of these cells, I can do 13 centimeters for the width of the cells. If I times it by 4, it's 52, so uh, the difference between 56 and 52 is 4 centimeters. And I need 5 spaces. There are the 2 on the side and a 3 in the middle. I have 5, it's about 0.8 between these. So what I usually do is I would make my midline and then I would go away to measure instead of going from the side and then go across when I do my measuring of the mirrors. And for the height, I have 90, uh, sorry, 85.8 after accounting for the top and the bottom margin. I have 16 centimeters high for each. So that brings me to 80. And the difference between these two is about five point something. So try to make it as close to the width 
as possible. It's actually better um, to leave a little bit more space in the bottom depending on the length of your mirror. Sometimes it's actually a nicer composition if you have leave a little bit more breathing space in the bottom of the mirror instead of having more space on the top because once you have that, then you'll feel like everything is falling down at the bottom. And also, if your mirror is very long, you don't want your guests to bend down and look for the names at the bottom of the mirror. That's how I calculate it. I wanna show you some tools that I use for working on my mirror seating chart. So this is the pencil that I use to do all my guidelines with. And it's awesome because once you have put it on the mirror, all you have to do is use a damp cloth and it will come right off always need a pencil sharpener in order to sharpen this thing up. The second thing that I use is Sharpie oil-based markers in order to do the final product. I tend to use a medium point for big headers and extra fine point for the smaller names and table numbers. Then of course there are rulers. I have three big long rulers. Both of these are the Westcott rulers. I have a stainless steel one and a plastic one. I really wanted to like the plastic one. As you can see there, it's see-through, but because it comes in inches and I don't work in inches, I still need another ruler to measure out my mirror. I use this one because there is a cork backing to it, but I don't use this to line my mirrors because once I put this right against the mirror, there is still a gap between the ruler and the mirror itself. And depending on how angled you put your pencil it's not very accurate and i don't want to flip it around i don't want to scratch the mirror itself i still end up using a plastic ruler to measure they do come in l-shaped rulers which they have another long piece that is per, uh, perpendicular to the base so those ones are perfect because once you have all those marks, all you have to do is slide it along the edge of the mirror. With this one being so thin, even when you're sliding, there may still be a little bit of an angle to it and it may not be accurate. So I always end up using a thicker hard plastic that I can use this to do my lines. So these are the tools that I use. And of course, there are always other kind of paint markers that other people use. It really depends on personal preference. And it's also a trial and error and see which one you like. You'll see a quick video of me lining up the mirror itself. This is once again the mirror seating chart that I am doing. There are five rows. All of the rows have a maximum of 10 guests, except for this one. It only has eight. And if I am to divide them evenly, then this line right here would have quite a bit of space in between row four and five. So what I have done is I have decided to bring the first four rows down so that I can leave a little bit more space to do the header. Here is an overview that you can see down. What I have done is I have written out the actual table numbers and the very first row of the names. If you can see maybe this one, so for example, you can see that I have put arrows where I want them to go, especially the first row of the names, so that that way when I start to write, I have that first row of the name to guide me when it comes to the center line. I can use this one. I have to bring it to the left a little bit to make it more center, and then I will use this guideline to show me where exactly to start. So hopefully everything will line up in the middle. So another thing that I would like to show you is um, I like to put X's uh, along the space that I will be writing. That's because there are so many lines sometimes when you're so close up to the mirror you can't really see what, where exactly you're going to write. That's why I tend to like to put the excess on the mirror itself so I know where exactly I will be writing. So it takes a lot of time to line all this up and then have to figure out where everything goes. I am going to work on writing it out now. So I'll show you a process of that work. 
I am using a Sharpie oil based pen. I have the little lid to pump my pen. Just make sure that you don't pump it right onto your work itself. It creates a block at the spot that you pump. You don't want that to happen. So what you, you want to do is you just want to pump it and then see there's a little bit of oil paint right now that's dripping out. So you just want to pump it enough so that you have a good flow of the paint that comes down. And I'm going to start writing. to do is I'm going to be erasing all these guidelines and that's what I'm going to do now okay so here it is my mirror seating chart after all the guidelines have been erased I hope that you enjoyed my video and hope that you learned a little bit more of how to put together a mirror seating chart. And here it is. Thank you so much. Until next time.